welcome to the program. I am Deji Badimasi. It's decision day in Anambra State, and if you're from that state or live there, you should be at the polling unit at this very moment for accreditation so that you can vote when voting actually begins at about 12 noon later today, which is just a couple of hours away from this very moment. It's your opportunity to elect a new governor for your state. And of course, as you know, this opportunity comes just once every four years, so it's not one to be missed. Now, INEC Chairman Professor Tahiru Jaga has vowed that the election would be the best to be organized under his watch. The police has deployed thousands of men for the election, and police boss Mohammed Abubakar has said his men are ready to confront any security breach. All we pray for now is that the politicians behave well and that things go smoothly. There's so much at stake for some of the political parties considered as frontrunners in this election. For instance, um, should the governing Abga lose, lose, the party would be left with no state under its control. For the APC, it would be looking to use this election to prove that it can indeed pose a very strong challenge to the PDP in the 2015 general election. Now, should it lose the election, people may not take it too seriously as a viable opposition to the PDP in 2015. Now, what about the PDP? Despite the crisis it has had to deal with in Anambra State, it would be looking to prove its long-held claim that the state actually belongs to it. Losing the election might spell the death knell for the party in that state. And of course, it wouldn't be any good news at all for the president as far as 2015 is concerned. Now, the Labour Party on its part would be looking to demonstrate that it's a party to be taken seriously by aiming to increase the number of states under its control to two. At the moment, the party controls just own those states, and uh, there's certainly so much at stake, I should say, for the parties in this election. Now, let's turn our attention to some statistics about uh, this election. Now, just for you to get a clearer picture of what's at stake here and what the candidates are up against. Um, take a look at this now. We have 23 governorship candidates actually running for just one position, of course, as you know, the position of governor. In terms of the number of polling units, there are actually 4,608. And the number of registered voters, quite high, you would say, 1,784,536. Now, let us look at the distribution of these registered voters now across the three senatorial districts. Take a look now. Um, there you have the slide. Anambra North has um, 615,000. 300, and then you have Anambra South having um, 554,686 votes. Of course, you have Anambra Central almost having the same, uh, the same number of registered voters, I should say, as uh, Anambra North. So when you add all of that together, you're going to get uh, the total number of registered voters. Now, what about the local government areas? Votes, of course, voting will be taking place across the 21 local government areas in the state. But there are particular local government areas, some local government areas we want to consider, or I will choose to call catchment vote areas. Let's take a look at those local government areas now. There are actually five of them we have identified, and we expect that um, the candidates, the 23 candidates, will be looking at these five local government areas to make sure they're able to get enough, enough votes from these local government areas. And one thing I just want to tell you is this. Now, the result from these five local government areas could actually determine the outcome of this election. Now, take a look at uh, the local government areas. We have Idemili North having 12 wards with um, 173,832 registered voters, quite huge. And then Ogbaru actually comes second. Ogbaru is actually in the north, northern senatorial district. It has 16 wards, 139,057 um, registered voters. And then you have Onicha North, there you have Onicha South. You can see the figure there, Oka South. And then Onicha North having 15, 15 wards and uh, 117,332 registered voters. So the candidates will be looking at these five local government areas. They'll be aiming to make sure they win big. And if any candidate is able to win big across these five local government areas, there's every likelihood that that candidate would emerge as um, the, 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 the governor to be sworn in in March. Now, 
one thing the candidates must be praying for is that the people turn out. It's one thing to have a huge number of registered voters. It's a different ball game for these registered voters now to actually come out on election day to vote. The candidates will be praying what happened in 2010 doesn't happen again. Now, what exactly happened? Let's take a look at what happened in 2010. In 2010, there were actually 1,844,000 1,815 registered voters. But guess how many persons came out on election day to vote? 301,000, uh, 301,000, yes, 232 registered voters actually came out to vote. Well, something also happened in 2010 because I remember I actually covered that election. Some people actually came out. I think the number that actually came out to vote that day was would, would definitely be more than this, but uh, unfortunately there was a problem with the voters register at that time, so some people did not find their name on the voters register and they could not vote. But I can tell you the number that actually voted was quite abysmal. It's never happened in this country that you would have uh, 301,232 uh, voters now electing a governor in a state. And just look at the number of persons that did not vote in 2000 and uh, 10 when the last governorship election governor peter will be the incumbent governor actually won that election 1,543,583 persons registered voters registered they either didn't turn out to vote or some of them who actually turned out to vote didn't find their names on the voters register something we also want to tell you about this election let us look at the gender distribution something you must know women will be coming out to vote uh, this time the number of women who will be coming out to vote that's assuming that they all come out to vote will be quite higher than that of the number of men there you have the figure 50.5 percent of uh, registered female voters and uh, you have just 49.5 uh, registered male voters so um, you know we, we expect that the candidates would have done a lot of work on the women and of course you, you took a look at some of the rallies campaign rallies the candidates had we saw a lot of women now let us look at how a governor must emerge in, in this election it is very crucial because it's not enough for you to win uh, the popular vote it, it goes beyond that that's what the Constitution says let's take a look at that now now this is how a winner must emerge first the winner must be able to win majority of the votes cast so you must win majority of the votes cast and then the winner for you to be declared winner for any of the 23 candidates to be declared winner apart from winning the majority of the votes cast that candidate must also win one quarter of the votes in two-thirds of all the local government areas. Anambra State, as we told you, has um, 21 local government areas. One, one, a quarter of the votes will, will be 25. So basically, it means a quarter of the votes is 25%, and two-thirds of 21 will be um, 14 local government two, two thirds of 21 local government areas, I should say, would be 14 local government areas. So basically, what we're saying is that um, for anyone, any of the 23 candidates to be declared winner, the candidate must win majority of the votes cast, and the candidate must also be able to garner 25% of the votes in in 14 local government areas of the 21 local government areas in Anambra State. Well, the politicians would say they have done their work. The decision now lies with the people of Anambra State. We just wait and see what happens. But um, hopefully by Sunday, Sunday, either early or late Sunday, we would know who the next governor of Anambra State will be. Now, earlier on the program, the president of Akai Kenga, Chief Godi Wazariki, joined me in the studio to talk more about this election. I want to thank you very much, uh, Chief Godi Wazurike, President Akai Kenga, for coming on the program. The people of Anambra State are electing a new governor today. Tell me, how significant is this election? Thank you, Deji. You know, Anambra is a forward-looking, hard-working, vibrant state. Therefore, nothing about Anambra is ordinary, including the election. So if you notice the tempo of politics in Nigeria is on very high level right now because of this election. That's the only state Abga is actually controlling right now. And then people are asking, will Abga return the seat or will Abga be a, a party without a seat? So for the average man in Anambra, Anambra election means Anambra is at the crossroad. You must go back to when Mbadi Nuju was there and he was so sure that he couldn't even pay salaries or pension. And he never did. 
course. Um, also, 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 so some people say some people say he remains the worst governor. That honestly, ever, ever had. and then Chris Ngugi came and turned things around. He was able to demonstrate then that you can pay salaries, pay pensions, and still develop the state. He was there until the courts removed him. Removed him. Then Peter B came in after a long battle. And then he has his own style of politics. And now Peter B's eight years will soon come to an end. So people are anxious to know what next. Where do we go? Let's look at the politics of zoning too. Do, do you think it's going to be a crucial factor in this election? Be, because um, Anambra North, for instance, people have said, of course we all know, has never produced a governor. Do you think that will count so much in the minds of the people of Anambra as they go to cast their votes? Yeah, you know, there is a problem with this zoning. When they said talking of zoning, the impression was that all the candidates will come from Anambra North, but that's not what has happened. Exactly. Right now we have Tony Moye, Comrade Tony Moye, from Anambra and Willie Obian from Anambra North. We have Chris Inge from Anambra Central. And then you have you find over from Anambra South. Uh, that is not forgetting it, that there are other all 21 the three, candidates. Yes, all as well, the three zones have very strong candidates. So nobody knows what will happen. If if I Yoba is able to take his Anambra South and say this is my area, I'm dominating, Chris Ngigi takes Anambra Central, Central, which is representing at the Senate, and says this is my area, I'm dominating. And then the vote is split. The vote is split in Anambra North between PDP and Abga. But you'll be making a mistake if you look at it in that lay. Uh, do, do, do you be think for, from Anambra Central. Central, yes. But do you think it is wise for Anambra North, for instance, to have come up with two candidates? You, you don't think that could be a problem for the candidates themselves? I mean, not looking at any candidate at all, but that it, it could be a problem for, for both of them. You know, in politics, they say 24 hours is a long time. Anything can happen. For a long time, it was like only Obiano was coming from the north until Comrade Moe triumphed. Suddenly, Anambra North now has two candidates. But remember, Obiano has two legs, one in Anambra North, one in Anambra Central. By virtue of the that fact is that P2B. No Don't ever that. forget that. So, Anambra North, if they're able to do their work well, they can stay carry the day. Anambra Central can stay carry the day. Anambra South can stay carry the day. Let me just venture by saying the obvious. It's an open election. Anything can happen. We also know religion plays a crucial role in the politics of Anambra State. How much of a role do you think it is going to play in this election? Let me just make a general statement. The able speaking areas of this country, you may have about 65% or 70% 70, 70 Catholic. Let's say 65%, then about 30% Anglican, and then Methodists, Assemblies, and others can make up maybe about 5%. So anything you are doing in Ibo land, you must carry the churches along. If the Catholic Church says this man is an enemy, or Anglican Church says this man is an enemy, you're in trouble. So the churches will play a very crucial role. When the elections were held in Imo State, the election officers in Olu Senatorezo were JSDPC, Justice and Development Commission, yep. of the Catholic Church. The Reverend Fathers were the returning officers. And if you remember that the then governor, Ikedi, Hakim had his problems with their own father. So you don't joke with the Catholic Church. They may forgive you, but the Christian mothers will never, never leave you alone. They will never let you forget it. So for this election, is either a death knell or is. A death knell for the PDP or. <laughs> well, not for, for PDP for because well. PDP has a bigger apple in Abuja. For Abga, if he does not win, trouble. For the party. And for APC. For APC, if he does not win, it means that leave the entire Southeast now out. In other words, whether Rogers or Koroja contests under APC, under Abga, nobody will know. So for now, Anambra is key to Abga, to APC, to 
PDP to say yes, we can get our acts right. To the Labour Party to say yes, we can even get more than one state. Still ahead on the program, the never-ending crisis of the PDP. With the latest action of the party's hierarchy, could its reconciliation process be dead? We'll be weighing the opinion of a political analyst. Stay with us. Every day, every hour, and every minute, news break in Nigeria. Things happen so fast, it's most times difficult to track and comprehend them. But that's what we do right here on DJ360. 2015, would you want to come back again? It's like asking Jesus Christ if he knew he was going to die, will he, come, will he want to come back as the savior of the world again? We do not just help you track the stories, we break them down. Explore all the angles, analyze the issues so that you can fully comprehend the stories and use them to make the right decisions. Welcome back. Early this week, the Court of Appeal caused a stare in the ruling People's Democratic Party when it ruled that former governor of Oshun State, Olagun Sonyo Yulala, remains the national secretary of the party. As you know, the former governor is one of the arrowheads of the factional new PDP. So it was no surprise when the faction, including the seven governors known as G7, met and made this announcement. We thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for what he has done by vindicating through the courts the position of the Secretary General of PDP. We are very happy with what has happened and the Secretary General will resume his office appropriately after all due process have been covered. And we think it's a vindication of what has been transpiring because all along the issues were issues of due process, issues of reform, and we are happy that the court has done this for us. So we look forward to resolutions and future resolutions of matters. Now, following that meeting, Olagun Sonyo Yulala had issued a statement saying he was resuming duty the following week, but that did not happen. Rather, the party decided to come down hard on him and other members of the factional new PDP. The National Working Committee, in line with its constitutional rights and the provisions of the Constitution, has, after preliminary hearings, as stated in our Constitution, suspended forthwith from the PDP the following one Alahaji Kawu Baru Kawu Baraje one Alahaji Abubaka Ka Karawu Baraje two Dr. Sam Jaja Sam Sam Jaja three Dr. Olugosoye Oyola. Olagusoye Oyola. Chief Olagusoye Oyola. Prince Olagusoye Oyola. And fourthly, Ambassador Ibrahim Kazure. Kazare. I've now been joined on the program by a political affairs analyst and also a lawyer, Mr. Chima Naji. Mr. Naji, thank you very much for joining us on the program. It would appear things are getting worse for the PDP. And with the way things are now, do you think there's any chance at all that uh, there could be some kind of reconciliation? Well, I think um, I, anybody who was expecting that Tony Lola would have been just taken back like that, uh, probably was not uh, reading the temperature uh, within the PDP circle. As a matter of fact, they ought to have been suspended a, a long time even ago. before the, the judgment. So it was a strategic mistake because now it would appear as if they were trying to hamstrung the judgment of uh, the appeal court. You know, because they have not As gotten a, lawyer, a stay. Isn't that the case? I, I, that is what it it is. You know, ordinarily, because there's no stay. You know, uh, even if they are appealing, the fact that you have appealed does not detract from the fact that the the fruit of judgment for the uh, the successful party should not uh, be pursued, uh, except there is a, a court order staying execution of that judgment. But for now, there, there there's no exec I mean, there's no such order. Okay, 
even though they had, the PDP had indicated its intention to appeal to the Supreme Court how, against how, how that judgment. How do you then think that the, 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 the law can deal with this now, the court especially can deal with this kind of situation? Here you had, there, there was a court judgment. Mm. After the court judgment, suspension. Well, the law, the law is uh, the law only to the extent that it can be enforced. And who has the powers to enforce? It is the executive. You understand? So uh, perhaps they will use this uh, suspension to buy time for the, the party to appeal. <coughs> would you to be the, expecting we will to go back to the appeal court to say, hey, you gave me a judgment and um, this is the what The appeal court has become functus officio. You understand? It can no longer go back to the court because the court has delivered its judgment. Uh, it is for, for him to apply what the, the rules say for enforcement of judgment, for him to derive the benefits there, thereof. Okay, okay. But, but unfortunately, in this particular situation, it's going to be very tough for him, you know, very, very tough. And I'm not sure that uh, he himself is expecting, yes, I'm not also too sure that he's legitimately expecting to be reinstated as secretary, given all that has happened. happened. Exactly. Okay, it, it, we, we saw the, the uh, publicity, the national publicity secretary, that's a spokesperson of um, the PDP, you know, reeling out the offenses committed by these members that uh, were suspended. Basically, he said, they were guilty of anti-party activities. I mean, the same offense they accuse this, um, you know, these members, these senior officials now, they're suspended. The same offense, you could say, the seven governors are guilty of, and they decided to remain silent on the seven governors. That's a G7. They had also been <coughs> silent on these other members until uh, yeah. this particular uh, development. Frankly speaking, it would seem that the party was trying to see the possibility of resolving the, uh, the, the crisis. But it appears that the G7 and uh, some other people that uh, you. are you know, thinking in the same manner thought that they were getting the upper hand because there's some kind of media uh, bleed on their activities. Because the opposition, particularly the APC, appear to be ready to reap, you know, from what looks like that uh, loss from the PDP. It has been neither here nor there because, um, you see, if you are caught between the Red Sea uh, and the devil, it depends on your knowledge of the devil to decide whether you should jump into the Red Sea or embrace the devil. devil. So apparently, because the devil has a distance to them, and perhaps the Red Sea is not so close. Definitely, uh, they will end up in one of them. So they are trying to weigh their options. Do, do you think this crisis can be resolved? It will. Do you see the possibility? It, it is possible to be resolved, not because it is um, resolved through some kind of uh, engineering. It is the bread and butter kind of politics we play. Even some of the agitations have to do with grabbing more powers, getting more positions to leverage your chopping, you know, if you excuse my language. Now, when the chips are down and some people see that they are not likely to get the position, they will find a way to come back. It will be resolved not because, not because the party will have a mechanism of doing so, but because they know that Nigerian politicians don't have staying power, outside, outside power. That's why Nigerians are ready to go and sweep the corridors. Even if you were a former governor, you will, you will now go back to those people who are in power to sweep the corridors in order to have some uh, uh, patronages. That's the Nigerian politics for you. That's why they have been recurring decimals. They don't have staying powers on their own to either build relevance from what they are doing by themselves or maybe stay away from politics and do other things legitimately. They will always go back, one way or the other. Mr. Chairman Naji, I want to thank you very much for coming on the my program. My pleasure. Thank my you very pleasure. much for your time. Now, if you missed the program or want to watch it again, you can do so by visiting our website. It is www.tv360nigeria.com. There you'll find out uh, 
about our programs and of course you can see all the happenings during uh, the Anambra governorship election and you'll also find uh, programs this program and lots more you can also watch us on YouTube by subscribing to our YouTube channel it is youtube.com slash TV 316 Nigeria and on Facebook you can follow us not Facebook now I should say but Google Plus so follow us on Google Plus at TV 360 Nigeria and you can like us on Facebook the address is facebook.com slash forward slash TV 360 online you can also follow us on Twitter our handle is at TV 360 online and uh, we would very much like to hear from you just tweet at us uh, go to the Twitter handle send whatever message you want to do not forget also our website www.tv360nigeria.com you'll get all the stories about the Anambra governorship election that is taking place today we want to thank you very much for watching I am DJ Badi Mercy I'll see you next week and when we come next week we'll be discussing what exactly transpired during this election see you then <laughs>